boys and girls, Mrs. Kowalski, you are a friendly neighborhood reading coach again, uh, about to read you a story called Not Your Typical Dragon, written by Dan Barrell and illustrated by Tim Bowers. And it is a kooky crazy tale about this silly kind of crazy dragon. Let's see what happens. Our introduction page has a picture of a knight and a dragon in the forest somewhere. And there's the dragon outside a castle. Crispin Blaze was born into a proud family of fire-breathing dragons. Every blaze breathes fire, explained his father. I breathe fire, your mother breathes fire, and tomorrow when you turn seven, you'll breathe fire too. Oops. There's his dad talking to him, showing him family pictures. Check out the pictures in the background there. Can you see them? The little dragon imagined all the forests he would burn down. He dreamed of all the castles he would destroy. He also considered boiling water to make tea, but he didn't tell his father that. The next day, Crispin sat among family members and friends with a big cake. If the cake was brought to the table, who will light the birthday candles, asked his mother. I will, declared Crispin. He could feel the tingling inside his tummy, but when he opened his mouth, fire did not come out. Whipped cream came out. Crispin, shouted his father, dragons breathe fire. What will the neighbors think, worried his mother. I love whipped cream, said his little sister, Ashley. The little dragon was whisked off to the doctor the very next day. Please fix my son, demanded Crispin's father. What seems to be the problem, asked the doctor. Crispin opened his mouth and breathed. But fire did not come out. I wonder what the... Band-Aids! Band-Aids came out! Oh my goodness! I see, said the doctor gravely. Dragon should breathe fire, insisted Crispin's father. We were low on Band-Aids, said the nurse. The doctor sent Crispin home with medicine. He swallowed two teaspoons full before going to school. It will help me become a real dragon, said his father with a wink. After school, Crispin joined his first fire-breathing practice. One by one, little dragons aimed their fiery breath at stacks of logs until they burst into flames. Crispin stepped confidently. He could feel the medicine bubbling in his belly, but when he opened his mouth, fire did not come out. Ah! Marshmallows came out. Dragons breathe fire, yelled the coach. Isn't that right, class? The other dragons didn't answer. They were too busy looking for pointy sticks for marshmallow roasting. I guess I'm not a real dragon, Crispin thought. He worried his family would be disappointed. So, he ran away from home. Poor Crispin. Poor, poor Crispin. The world can be a scary place for a little dragon who can't breathe fire. Crispin found a dark cave. I'll be a fireless dragon all by myself. I won't bother anyone and no one will bother me. An hour later, he had a visitor. I am Sir George, squeaked a thin, shiny knight. Show yourself, dragon. Crispin shuffled out of the cave. The thin, shiny knight held up his thin, shiny sword. D -d 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 Do your worst, dragon. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire did not come out. Oh my goodness, what do you think came out this time? Bubbles! Soap bubbles came out. Don't you breathe fire, dragon? Crispin shook his head. I can't. Sir George moaned, but my father insists that I fight a fire-breathing dragon. It even says here in my book that your typical dragon breathes fire. I'm not your typical dragon, Crispin explained. Sir George sighed. Hmm. I can't go home. Me neither, Crispin nodded. But then he had an idea. Maybe your book could tell us what to do. Hmm, novel idea that your book could tell you what to do. Of course, S Sir George searched through the pages. It says maybe a 
it's just your diet. Sir George fed Crispin spicy curry, scorching chili, blistering salsa. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire didn't come out. Red party streamers came out. At least they're the right color, said the knight. Oh my goodness. It looks like they could have fun with those streamers, though. Sir George searched through the book again. Ah, aha, ah, ah, it says. It's probably your attitude. Sir George showed Crispin how to look mean and angry, angry enough to breathe fire. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire didn't come out. Soft, cuddly, teddy bears came out. Uh, hmm, said Sir George. We may have to take a step backward. It's no use, Crispin sighed. I'm just not your typical dragon. Let's show that page again. That one was too good not to see twice. What to do? How are they going to get this guy to have fire breathing out? But Sir George was not ready to give up. Ha! Huh, the book says you're too stressed. Sir George made Crispin close his eyes while he described a quiet, relaxing day at the ocean. Do you feel calm? Now imagine a hundred shiny knights attacking you. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire didn't come out. Beach balls did. Oh, goodness, goodness. Well, that's just plain weird. Secretly, Sir George was glad that Crispin couldn't breathe fire. He liked the little dragon and he didn't want to fight him. Crispin liked the shiny knight too, but he missed his parents. Sir George, it's getting dark. I want to go home. The shiny knight patted him on the back. Don't worry, little dragon. I'll take you there. Crispin's parents were relieved when he arrived home safely. Sir George was about to say goodbye when they heard a shout. There you are, my boy. Why on earth are you playing with a fire-breathing dragon? He's my friend, father, whispered Sir George. And besides, he doesn't breathe fire. A dragon that doesn't breathe fire? That's the silliest thing I ever heard, the shiny man laughed. Crispin's father stormed out of the house. My son is not silly. He may breathe fire. He may not breathe fire, but I certainly do. Crispin's father let out a powerful spray of flames. Look how surprised everybody looks like. Oh, no. I'd be scared, too. Do your worst, dragon, declared the shiny man. But then the flame scorched the lawn. That's enough, honey, said Crispin's mother. The flames singed the fence. You've made your point, dear. Now stop showing off, she scolded. Then the flames ignited the roof. <gasps> Crispin's father panicked. I can't stop breathing fire. You'll burn our house down, cried his mother. You'll burn down the whole neighborhood. Dragons came running from all directions. They knew how to start fires, but nobody knew how to stop them. Crispin suddenly felt a tingling in his tummy. He felt a bubbling in his belly and he opened his mouth and fire did not come out. A gush of water came out. Woo! Crispin saved the day. Oh my goodness. Crispin aimed the water at his father's flames and he saved his home. He even saved the shiny man who really wasn't looking shiny anymore. Hooray for Crispin, everyone shouted. Hooray! On Crispin's next birthday, there was a big party. Family and friends came from all over the land. Sir George and his family came too. Lots of dragons were dancing. Crispin stood with his mouth wide open. Fire still didn't come out. Music came out instead. Your son, said old uncle to Crispin's father. He's not your typical dragon, is he? No, replied Crispin's father proudly. My son is something special. Look how proud. And look how much fun they're having. And then he jumped up and danced to Crispin's music too. The end. And it says here, poor Kevin, who would rather tickle a dragon than fight one. Ah, that's funny. Well, I hope you enjoyed my book, uh, Not Your Typical Dragon. Tune in, and I'll read another one soon.